Welcome back folks and to all the new faces joining this video, welcome in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how I've lit this image with just one light. Yes, one light, is it possible? Well, stick around and I'm going to show you exactly how. So as we start our journey in photography lighting folks, we tend to always just buy the one light to start off with, to experiment with, to see what we can do. But I wanted to put this video together to show you what you can do and what you can achieve with just one light, whether it be a speed light, studio strobe, whatever light you have, you can recreate this image with just one light and I'm gonna show you exactly how. Now, you can see from the image that there is a little bit of light on the background, like down the side of the bottle. How is that possible with just one light? Well, stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you, folks, a little technique which I've discovered. I've never seen before. I've came across it. I've seen it used, but not not in this scenario. So, stick around to the end of the video, and I'm going to share that little nugget of information with you, folks. I found that was really, really cool, and it helped me capture this whole image using one light in camera. Okay, folks, in the studio, I have the lights and the, the set all set up. I've got a, a whiskey bottle and the kind of start just sitting on top of a couple of outer crate boxes. Um, and I'm shooting on the artery canvas hand paper, the canvas backdrops, beautiful backdrops. I'm going to go and walk through step by step and show you exactly how I've lit this scene, but and also more importantly, what you can actually achieve with just one light. And then that is the main subject of this video what you can achieve with just one light and it's really cool and stick around till the end because there's a little trick I'm going to show you that I've never used before okay I was experimenting and that's what it's all about experimenting exploring and then using those techniques that you've you've found in your shots and I found a great little technique that's been used before but I don't think it's been used before in this kind of scenario so I'm going to show you how to achieve this whole image in camera Okay, folks, I'm really excited to share this information with you because I was super pleased with how this turned out with just one light. Uh, and I think you guys will be really pleased to see what you can achieve with one light. So let's, uh, enough me waffling on, we'll get into the video. I'm going to start by walking through the lighting setup that I've got now. So we're sitting the Pixar Pro 6600 and we've sat that in the easy open softbox. Now I've used a square softbox and not the, uh, the octobox. And the reason for that is because I'm shooting a cylindrical product. So I'm shooting something that's long and thin. So I want to match that with my lighting source. I'm, so I'm using uh, a long and narrow softbox, okay? So that's the reason for using a softbox. Now I haven't got it gridded. It's still fitted with the double diffusion. It has both the diffusion panels on. We've got both of them fitted to that. Uh, I have the Pixar Pro at one quarter power for this shot. Camera settings are F8, one two hundredth of a second, uh, ISO one two five. So I'm going to take the first shot and I'll pop it up on the screen and I'll show you exactly what that looks like with just the one light. So we'll just take a shot. I'll pop that up on the screen. Now you can see from that, there's a really harsh, really, really harsh highlight down the side there. Um, and the rest of the bottle is looking really dark. The actual texture on the wood isn't too bad, but the bottom half, the bottom of the box is really blown out too. Now I'm probably, I'm gonna leave it like that because I think once I add what I'm gonna add in down the lane, that's gonna, that's gonna sort that out. So what I wanna do next for this shot, because the side of the bottle, you can see the highlight on the image is running all the way down here, which is where I want the, the highlight to run. But on this side of the bottle, it's complete darkness. So I'm only using one light and I need to kind of fill, fill that in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a big white foam board to reflect that light, bounce it back into the image. So I'll set that up now. We'll take a test shot and I'll show you the effect of having that reflector bouncing, recycling the light back on the other side. And that'll pop up on screen now. And you can see it's lifted that whole side, the shadows. It's, it's really lifted them shadows loads. But down the middle, right down the middle of that bottle, it's still really dark. Um, on the neck, it kind of 
separates, the reflection separates. So what I'm going to do is move this around, back around here, to try and get a little bit closer actually. To try and get that highlight running just down the side of this bottle with no gap. So we'll take a test shot and I'll see what that's like. I think it still needs to be moved down just a little bit more too. So we'll bring it back round. Make sure that's not in the shot. Just seen it in the shot, so I'm going to bring this back. Better, take the test shot. We've still got that dark edge running right down the centre of the glass, um, which I'm still not happy about. No, I'm not happy about that at all. So, what we're going to do with that. Right, we're going to bring it closer and I'm going to bring this further back round because the, I need the light bouncing back into the front as well. So we'll bring that in as close as we can. Make sure it's not in the shot. Bring it in a bit closer. Right, we'll take that shot, see what that looks like. Right, now that's lifted that a little bit more, like just a little bit more. And you can see that whole edge of the bottle there. It's a continuous reflection. Um, so that's looking a bit better. I'm still going to move it back a bit because I don't want that reflection on the back. So we'll try that again. There we have it. It's kind of a little bit more even either side, but that highlight on that right hand side is still, still way too much, and there's too much light on the backdrop because I've got an effect that I want to apply later on in this shoot. So what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to modify the modifier. Like I say, I've got a soft box here, but I'm going to add to it a strip box grid to one side of that. So I'm doing this so it controls the spill on this background. Now, you can use a card, you can use a flag and flag that off, but obviously that's going to be in the shot. So using the grid is just an easier way of doing this. We'll take a test shot and see what that looks like. So that's dark in the background down, that's kind of where, roughly whereabouts I want that background now, that, that's looking nice. Still got to work on the highlights on the bottom because it's just, it's just not working for us. So, and I'm still seeing, in the shot I'm seeing this. So I'm going to bring that round, give it round a bit more. Yeah, try that test shot. Just be out the way now so that background's nice and that's exactly how I want the background to look because I'm going to add something to that further down there. That's still in there a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just bring that. Touch. Like that. And the great thing about shooting tethers is I can see it all on the screen. So that, that's, that, that's gone there now. So you can kind of see them highlights on the side of the bottles are quite they're quite even, I quite like that. Still, it's still a bit dark running down the front of that. Um, so I need that light coming round a bit more. Like I see, if I put something in front of it to bounce the light back to the front of it, all that's going to do is reflect it. I'll, I'll give it a go, I'll just, I'll put a white card above the top of it and we'll see what that looks like. So there, it's kind of filled the top half of it a bit, but you see that horrible reflection? It's, all it's doing is reflecting the light back off this card, and that's what you're seeing in the glass, but I, I don't want that. It doesn't look nice at all. So, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'm going to turn the softbox. At the minute, it's running long ways. I'm going to turn the softbox horizontal, so there's a, a longer strip of light coming this way. Now, the softbox is high enough. The height of it is enough to make sure I've still got that highlight running down the side of the box, but if I turn it long ways, Hopefully that should wrap enough light around the front to illuminate the label a little bit more. So we'll try that now. I'll have to take the grid off. Now I still want the background looking the way I want it, so I don't want any of the spill from here falling on the background. So I'm going to take this the grid off and just hang it on the short end of the modifier. Maybe that's going to hang low, but that doesn't matter. That's fine. As long as it's controlling the spill and it's not falling on the background. So 
So I'm gonna leave that like that and we'll see what that looks like. See if that makes a difference. I think by turning that round that softbox that way, there's more light bouncing off here and that's bouncing back on the background. So I'm just gonna move that slightly away and see if that makes a difference. Pop that on the screen and that's darkening that down a little bit more. Right, so we're kinda we're roughly there with where I want the light falling and where I don't want the light falling. So I've got the background looking the way I want it. The bottle looks terrible still, it really does. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a diffusion panel. Now if you hadn't seen my other video, uh, I'll pop a link up here so you can go and check that out. Using diffusion panels, a really effective way to soften any light source um, and kind of control how hard and soft you want that light source looking. So even though I'm using a softbox and it's relatively close, it's only What's that a foot, 14 inches away from the bottle? Adding that extra bit of diffusion panel is just going to soften that light down that bit more. So we're going to add that now. So I'm adding a, adding a diffusion panel now. That's just the diffusion panel out of the 5 mon reflector. I'll put a link in the description below with all the gear that's used in here so you can check that out. But it's just an inexpensive 5 mon reflector and that's the diffusion panel. So that's what we utilise in the day. I'll take a test shot, see what that looks like. And you can see how it's softened that highlight down lovely down the side. It really has softened it down beautiful. But I think I want it a little bit softer. And I think I also want the light coming a little bit more round on the label on the bottle. I want that the light to try and wrap around a bit more. So I'm going to bring the panel close as, pot, as close as I can so it's out of the shot. I think that's as close as I'm going to get it. We'll take a test shot. And there you go, I've softened that just a little bit more, just a hair, but it's also lifted that center bit as well. Um, still not perfect, but again, we're just using one light here, folks. If I was using multiple lights, it's a lot easier to kind of light that part of the image and just put a light directly on it and just light it. Now, what I'm looking at is the bottle, the whiskey in the bottle is looking really, really dark and I want to brighten that up. So to do that, we can cheat a bit. We can add another light, but what I can do is add a bit of card behind it, a bit of colored card to reflect the light back through the bottle. So that's what we're going to do. So what I've done is I've cut out the shape. It's obviously orange, which is going to help illuminate the bottle and give it that little richness, that more richness to the liquid inside. So we're going to place this behind the bottle. Now you can actually, the camera, isn't going to see that. I've cut it out and you've just got to position it carefully behind the bottle and we'll take a test shot and I'll show you what that's like. And we'll just take a little bit of, it will take a little bit of manoeuvring to make sure you don't get it in the shot, but it can be done. I'm looking through the viewfinder and I cannot see that there, so hopefully you want to take the shot. That won't be apparent in the actual shot, so let's take a test shot and find out. Oh, straight away you can see that just lifted the colour of that liquid, the whiskey inside that bottle now, and that looks so much better. That really does look lovely. I'm looking at that now and it looks fab. Yes, I'm happy with that. And it's also, it's kind of took your eye away from that dark strip down the centre of the bottle. So as it is now, I mean, that looks pretty good with just one light, but I want to put a light on the background. I want a light on the back. I want a little bit of glow on that canvas backdrop just to separate the bottle again and just to add something, something extra to it. How am I going to do that? Well, I've come up with a nice little technique. I've never seen it done before this way. I've never seen anybody use it this way, so this could be a first. I don't know if it's not. Comment below and let us know if somebody else has done that. I would love to see their approach to it too. So what we're going to do, my camera allows me to take multiple exposures and it blends it in camera. So what I'm going to attempt to do is take a shot as is there and then I'm going to put the light, take the softbox off, put the light on the background and try and get a nice glow on the background behind the bottle and then hopefully the camera should combine them two shots and then I have produced the image in camera with one light. 
that's what we're going to try now. Now I know I'm limited to time on the camera, I don't know how to change it, but I think I've got about 30 seconds before it kind of it stops the process of the multiple exposures. So as soon as I take the first shot, I've got 30 seconds to try and get that light but off of there and on the back and take the shot also. So that could take a couple of attempts, but we'll give it a try and I think the results are going to be really cool. So I'm going to set the camera up for multiple exposure, but the problem with that is I kind of shoot tethered. So I've got to do it all from the camera. So I'm going to have to unplug from tethered and I'll bring the camera down and I'll show you exactly how I set it up in the camera for multiple exposures. I'm going to take the shot. Okay, folks, so we'll do that now. Boom, and there you have it folks. There we go, <laughs> took a few attempts I tell you. You've got to be quick. Um, but I found that obviously just using the multiple exposure setting in the camera and setting it to three shots, so it gives us a bit more time in between the shots to get the, uh, the softbox off, get the light on the background, take that shot. And as you can see, I'll pop that image on the screen now. That looks really cool for just using one light. The glow and everything on the background is perfect. Well, I'm really happy with that shot, folks. I hope you guys have found this video really, really useful. Um, I really wanted to put this video together to show you guys what you can actually achieve with just one light. That's all it takes. We've got one big light in the sky, and we can use that to our advantage all the time. We just need one light. It is difficult. It is a lot more, there is a lot more of a thought process involved in just using one light. It's much easier. This setup would be would take less time and it would be more efficient with more lights. And that's why we use more lights on these shots. But the point of this video is to show you what you can achieve with just one light. So if you folks have liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this down the line. Flick the notification bell so you can see when each of those videos is posted. And I'll see you folks in the next one. See you then.